guys. Welcome to the Spoonie channel where we are unfiltered, unafraid, and pain recognizes pain. I am happy to be back in front of you guys. I have not filmed a video since before Thanksgiving. And I apologize for that. Um, it's not that I take any of my subscribers. The fact that I have, I think, 70 of you doesn't make this any less important to me. It's simply the fact that through Thanksgiving, through Christmas, through January, and through February, I have been going through a lot of things medically, as well as every, every chronically ill and every spoony knows that the holidays will knock your ass out. Just will. So it took a lot between all of the medical things I've been going through, and I'm going to make a video on that so that you guys know, because there's been a lot, I switched uh, to a new doctor, so there's been a lot of stuff going on, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. Um, but the thing I'm here to talk to you about is my social security. <clears throat> so some of you who have been with me or watched older videos know that I suffered a stroke and a grandma seizure July 3rd of 2018. So I had gone on um, leave, Florida medical leave, and or not Florida, family medical leave. <laughs> and we thought that I was going to be able to go back to work. Now, I've said it in previous videos, and it's true. My doctors didn't want me to go to work. They, they recognized that I had no quality of life, and they wanted me to stop, but I wanted to work as long as I could, and I know so many of you empathize with this. I don't know many chronically ill people who have to stop working and are like, living the dream! No. No. So, it was really hard for me, and we thought I was going to be able to go back to work, and it just, I couldn't. So around October of 2018, I got a lawyer. My cousin, I, and I've told you, all my cousins, my brother, we have autoimmune disorders. It kind of ran rampant through my generation of kids. Uh, I was the only one that got the an arthritic portion of it. But my cousin, who has Crohn's disease, had already gotten Social Security and said, do not try to do it on your own. Start with an attorney. And I went, okay, okay. I was a paralegal, but I didn't do Social Security. And the bottom line is, dealing with the government, there's, there's no way. So we put in for Social Security. Denied. And I remember, the I remember the first letter denying me. And you can't help but be personally offended. Because you know how sick you are. And you know the medical records. And on top of it, I, I mean, there are so many medical records. I can't imagine that they wouldn't be bigger than that. I mean, I just... I wish <laughs> any of my older people know a card catalog. Like, I feel like if you pulled out a filing cabinet drawer, it would be like five drawers of just me. So I don't get my medical records. I don't peruse them. I just assume, probably incorrectly, that doctors are writing everything down that I'm telling them, being accurate. So the first time I was denied, you can't help but be personally offended. You're like, I know I'm sick. Why do you not know I'm not, I'm sick? Why are you telling me I'm not sick enough for this? And I remember my neurologist saying, don't worry, they do that to everybody. Second time, denied. By this time, you know, we're stressing out. We are down to one income, which I am thankful to have. But it's hard. It's hard call my attorney, immediately reapply. Third time, deny. And at this point, because those denials come pretty quickly, right? Within a couple of months, depending on how fast you can put in for your appeal, then it's deny, deny, deny. So at that point, my attorney put in for an appeal. 
I had put in for the appeal at the beginning of 2019. Actually, it was, yeah, about, about 2000, the beginning of 2019. And I had to wait for a court case, wait for a judge to become available. Through this time, over a year, and, and, and when I say over a year, this process had been already ongoing for six months before then. My husband had a second job, we refinanced the house, we took money out of 401k, and through it all, I keep thinking, we're so blessed we have the ability to do this. We are down to bare bones, we are, you know, not living the life that we lived before, on top of just the epic, epic gripping guilt that you get when you're not working and you feel like you're not contributing to the home. You can't help it. I can't help it. It's the fact that there's not a lot when you get to that point that you can contribute with regard to doing the dishes and the laundry and making dinner. And you also can't contribute financially. You literally feel like a useless human sack of meat. And I know that's, <laughs> that's such a terrible thing to say, but it is the truth. So through this process, my husband's working two jobs. I'm miserable. I'm so sad. I feel so depressed. I finally get notification. Finally, finally, finally. In I think August or September of 2019 that a judge was available and I had a hearing on February 26th. At that point I'm getting making sure all my doctors know you know and I have a I've talked about my neurologist before really wonderful man and when I kept getting denied he kept telling me it's normal they're going to deny you. You're going to have to go to a hearing. Like I said, it doesn't make you feel any better. It doesn't make you f feel less offended when you're like, how sick do you got to be, man? Before my hearing, I go and meet with my attorney. Well, what he told me and was a, a wonderful piece of advice is, you've been a medical file to the government or this judge. Now's your time to be a person. So, to give you, a, you know, kind of an idea of what he told me, in case you are waiting or going through the, rude, Ugh, I'm joking, waiting or going through this process, he said, it's going to be it, him and me, me and the attorney, and then a vocational expert, and then the judge. The vocational expert's job is to basically have looked over your medical records and tell the judge, yes, she's sick, but she can still do this, she can still do this, she can sit, she can be an Uber driver, she can, you know, basically find some job so that the government can say, you're not gonna get Social Security. So he said, you know, I encourage you to talk as much as you can. This is your time to tell him your work history, the how, how active you were. You know, I've said it before, and you guys are probably like, yes, I know, you scuba dived, you did Taekwondo, you fished, you, you know, walked in nature, you were very, very uh, active, but we were. We were, and, and for me, it's just that feeling where you're like, I want you to know that I worked hard. I worked hard. I'm not a college-educated woman, and I was the director of operations of a company because I worked hard to get there. I am not somebody who doesn't want to work. And that's all you want to scream at people. You also want to say, I'm not lazy. I'm not a lazy POS that is just here because they want to watch, you know, workaholics and do nothing all day. I'm here because I need this. And I think it was that, it was that feeling that caused me a little bit of problems in the hearing. And, and the hearing went well, but I'm gonna tell you what happened. My attorney said, I want you there a half an hour early so we can go over things. Sure, I'm sorry, there's a, a dump truck going by, so if you hear that, that's what it is. I gotta film what I can film. So I got there, it's me, 
an hour early. At a half an hour early, I go up to the second floor of this building. It's not a courthouse. It's actually in the back side of the Social Security building. And I go up the elevator and I have to use the restroom. So I'm just slowly cane, you know, I have a walking stick because my doctor wants me to stay up like this, ankylosing spondylitis. Um, so I'm going, I go to the bathroom and I, as I walk past double doors, I can see that there's a guard, an armed guard there. And I walk past and I go to the bathroom and I come back and, um, he had me sign in and then said, sit down right here. That way you don't have to walk very far. And I'm like, Oh, do you think I'm a, I'm a risk? He said, I saw, I watched you walk up and down that hallway. And at that point I saw that he had security cameras and he really had watched me take like seven minutes to walk down a hallway to go to the bathroom and then another five minutes to get back to him. Really sweet guard. My attorney was not there a half an hour early. I am not surprised. I've worked with attorneys before. I was certainly expecting this. If you have an attorney that's on time, that's a unicorn. So he shows up. He asks, are you ready? I say yes. And then he immediately starts asking, do you use the walking stick all the time? Because in some of your doctor's notes, it says that your gait is fine. At that point, I'm losing my shit, you know, because I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? I use this all the time. I need it. It was the same doctor that I'm a, that gives me the fall wrist bracelets because I've fallen before. So I'm like, how are we supposed to, how are we supposed to trust that every single doctor that we get sent to, because we get sent to a lot, it's passing the buck, we all know it, is going to have the right information. So he starts in with that. Then he starts, I, you were supposed to go to the neurosurgeon. Did you go to the neurosurgeon? I said, I have that on March 3rd. Okay, I just need to get that ready. So... The problem is that energy started infecting me and I started shaking <laughs> and I have never in my life, I, I bounce my knee. I've mentioned it before and I'm going to talk about it because when we go in, the judge asked me about it. So I'm, so now I'm infected with this energy and never in my life have I had, I've had no control over my body as in spasms and pain but I started shaking and it was almost like a vibration from the inside. You know, they unlock the door. My attorney and I walk in, I see the judge and then I see a, a man sitting at the table to our right. And, 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 and like I said, I don't know how visibly, I don't think I was visibly shaking externally, possibly my hands and only so maybe my attorney could see, but I felt it. I felt like my heart, my liver, my gallbladder, my appendix, my kidneys, everything was just kind of rattling from the inside. And I could not quiet it. And, you know, we went in and the judge explained what we were there for. He went over my name. He, he, and then he looked at me and he said, are you nervous? And I thought it was because he could see me like literally vibrating, um, from the inside out. And he said, I'm asking because your leg is shaking. And just so you know, there's microphones. It's not videotaped as far as I know. No, it's not. He said it wasn't. But there are microphones. So I said, no, I'm not nervous. It's actually a pain reflex. And the judge said to my attorney, would you like to explain what she's talking about for the record? Meaning so that, oh, I forgot there's a stenographer there. There's always a stenographer so that it can go on record, it can be recorded. And he started talking about how the tremor is not just in my leg, it's through my whole body. And he's starting to get into the medical aspect of it. And I don't think that's what the judge wanted. So he looked at me and said, can you explain to me what it is? And I told him as plain and simply as I do everybody else, because I get asked about it a lot. I mean, but way back when, my neurologist actually did my very first brain MRI because he was convinced I had a tumor because of my leg shaking. Um, but I explained to him, I said, you know, if you stub your toe or you slam your finger in the car door, you don't just stand there and go, that hurts. I was like, you shake your hand, you dance around, you, you know, make noise. I was like, you do anything to take your mind off of it. I said, that's what this is. I can stop if you'd like me to. I'm like, but then I feel everything and it's more heightened. And he said, no, I don't want you to stop. 
And that was as good of an explanation as he needed. And I started to calm down a little bit because he put me at ease. He then looked at my attorney and they had a conversation and they were actually discussing statutes of where I can be placed for disability. Um, some statutes say more than one lower extremity has to be involved for this kind of um, disability and you know they're 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 talking about where they where he's going to request my disability fall under and the judge is actively helping him and they finally come to a decision and the judge says okay and then he looked at the vocational expert and the vocational expert looked at me and said I have some questions I saw that you worked in insurance and I saw that you were the director of operations for a, um, an automation company. So what is that? And I looked at him and I said, which one are you asking about? And he's like, well, obviously I know insurance. So the director of operations. <sighs> and I wish I could say I was gracious. And I wasn't mean, but I did get a little offended because I, I was like, I'm trying to be calm. You ask me two things. I'm not going to assume what you are asking me. So I said, I was the director of operations. I ran the company. You have the president, you have the vice president, and then you had the director of operations. I was in charge of it all. And that's actually how I said it to him. And I looked over and the judge had kind of a smirk. So now, bear in mind, I'm talking, but all of this is happening with the in the span of minutes. We've been in this room probably five minutes at this point. So once the vocational expert has asked me what a director of operations is, we look back to the judge and the judge said to the vocational expert, let me give you a hypothetical. And he said, hypothetically, for a full-time job, she would need to be able to do A, B, C, D, E. And I, to be quite honest with you, the vibration was in my ears and I couldn't even hear what he had asked the vocational expert. But basically my attorney said he asked if you can work. He asked, he basically said, in a 40 hour day, is there a job she can do? And I was waiting because he had prepared me, prepared me that I was not going to like what this, this person had to say. And the vocational expert looked down at his papers and said, no, she can't work. I felt like fireworks were going off inside me and I knew that didn't mean that I, I was approved and my attorney had told me we're gonna go to this hearing the judge is then gonna review the paperwork and take about five to six weeks to present his decision but still at that moment I felt like this was the win you know this was the Social Security win this was vocational expert said no she cannot work I'm like how much more definitive is that the man that Social Security pay the government pays and they actively tell you that at the beginning of the case they disclose that he is paid by the government said she cannot work so the judge looked at me and he said mrs. my last name I'm granting your request for Social Security effective July 5th 2018 he banged his gavel I burst into tears, which I feel like doing, just telling me. My attorney looked at me with just, I mean, like, mouth open. He had piles of paperwork and this, I mean, just lists and lists of information on the computer that he had, to, we had to say nothing. We had, to, we, we decided what statue I was going to be considered disabled under and the vocational expert said no she can't work and the judge said approved and I burst into tears burst into tears looked at my attorney who was in shock looked back at the judge somehow choked out thank you very much your honor and then we walked out and the sweet thing is before we went in the security guard because he the security guard lets you into the locked doors had said i i told my attorney i'm probably going to need tissues and the security guard says there's a box of tissues on the table 
the only thing that we add, he's like, go ahead and cry as much as you want. Make a Frosty the Snowman out of those tissues. The only thing I ask is that you bring them back out and throw them in my trash can because there's no trash can in the courtroom. So I came out holding my one tissue because I, I cried when he approved it. And I said, I, I brought you my tissue. And I, he's like, that's it? And I said, he approved it. And he looked at me and he said, of course he did. He's a fair judge. It makes me emotional. It, it really does because mm, we have so many losses. And I've had some, some setbacks in the health community. We have so many times, God, I work so hard on this makeup. We have so many times that we are not believed, that we are discounted, that we are just wandering with nobody to tell us, I understand. You're, you're hurting. I get your limitations. So for that judge to approve me on the spot, it was like, mm, whew. it was like the last eight years came to fruition and all the times I had been told we have to try this. I don't understand. I don't get what's going on. All of it came and that one yes, just, it just kind of burst my heart open. And we left the courtroom and my attorney looked at me and said, I have never had a case go that well. I don't know that they can go better than that. He said that judge was ready to approve you when you walked in. Sorry for the sniffling. Oh. And I looked at him and I said, can I give you a hug? Because consent. <laughs> and he said, of course. And we embraced in the hallway. And then as I went to walk away, he said, you know, it's not often that I get to say that I had a pleasure having you as a client. And it was the cherry on top of that cake that I had waited so long to be able to eat. <laughs> and all I can say is with everything that's been happening with my doctors and my health and us trying to figure out a way for me to stop being just stagnant and try to find ways to treat me. And like I said, We've moved forward, we've moved back. But in that moment, none of it mattered. None of it mattered. Because I was gonna be able to contribute. Because somebody validated me. And having worked in the legal system for a very long time, I also know that it is incredibly hard to find legal professionals and especially judges who are fair and who truly truly care about their jobs you have to care about that job that's that's a difficult job and you have to you truly truly have to care so i just wanted to share that with you i wanted my first video back to be good news i i wanted to tell you where i was and if you are struggling and waiting for Social Security, bless you. I am praying for you. My thoughts are with you. Please stay strong. If you have any questions, ask me. This is a community. Remember, pain and illness is not a race. There's no prize. There's no winner. Don't compare yourself to others. Just support others and remember that pain recognizes pain and I see you. Thanks guys.